Thanks a lot, Fabrice. Um, wow, this is so awesome to see all of you here. This is uh, really, really so nice to have a real Nextcloud conference again. Uh, I, I don't know about you, but I personally really missed that the, during the COVID times. And uh, of course, we are back with a, with a big bang, because this is the biggest conference so far in the history of Nextcloud with over 250 people here. So let's have some applause for that. <laughs> So that's, 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 that's really cool. And not even counting the people on the live stream, of course. So this is really, really, really impressive. We also have some um, organizations here that are doing really cool stuff around privacy. Morena, for example, Nitro Key, um, our friends from Colabra and others. So it's really nice to be in such a good, good company here today. Let's have another applause. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. So I'm also very happy that we have awesome keynotes coming up uh, the next few days. Uh, let's get started with uh, Mike, Mike Ausendorf. He's uh, the speaker of the uh, Committee for Digitalization in the German Bundestag, and he's also like a long-term open source um, um, yeah, inventor, supporter, and personal friend. And I'm really happy that he will be here to talk a little bit about the, the open source strategy in Germany later. I'm also happy that we have Felix Reda as a speaker. Felix, of course, um, was a long-time member of the European Parliament and a fighter for digital rights and open source. So this will also be super interesting. And of course, uh, Renata, who is the CEO of the Open Knowledge Foundation. So I really think this will be super interesting, cool keynotes, and I'm really looking forward to that. The motto of this conference, yes, for the first time we have a motto, actually, is shaping the... <laughs> <laughs> A little bit too early, Daphne, but thanks. <laughs> the, the motto of this conference is, uh, um, is um, shaping the future of privacy. And privacy is obviously something that is absolutely important as in the core of Nextcloud. This is why we're all doing this in the first place, because we want to protect all the data of all the users. And so privacy is one of our core values. But this is not the only core value we have. We actually have more of that. And to um, show it to you, we actually have a nice video. And let me play it now. We believe privacy is a fundamental human right and everybody should have access to secure communication free from surveillance. We are building decentralized products as an alternative to centralized platforms. People can choose what they want and where they want it. We believe in open source and open standards. Open source is the only way for users to trust their devices. We value sustainability, protecting people, society and the environment. We believe accessibility is a fundamental human right and technology should be accessible to everyone. The time of our users is very important to us. That's why we do our best to make Nextcloud easy to use. We foster diversity, from innovation to transparency and collaboration. Working with our communities and supporting marginalized people leads to a better result. So what do you all think? I think this is, uh, this is really, really nice. Um, but let's get started with Nextcloud. Nextcloud is, of course, as you all know, it's this really incredibly cool tool for collaboration and communication over the internet while protecting your data and your privacy. And I'm personally really happy, and this really motivates me personally a lot, that it's really used in a lot of very cool and interesting scenarios. So, for example, it's used by Amnesty International for their collaboration and their communication over the internet and really protecting the data and the communication of, for example, activists or journalists in places that are not very friendly. And this is, of course, where privacy via Nextcloud can really help to make an, an impact. So for me, this is really motivating. We're really doing something good here. It's also used by students and pupils in schools and universities all over the world. This is an example from SUNET. That's a solution in Sweden where people can um, learn from home and can really do have yeah nice e-learning experience. And Nextcloud is a part of it, again, protecting your privacy. 
Nextcloud is also super useful in scenarios where people don't have access to cloud services from the US or from China. Here, for example, people in, and students in, in Africa who really with res res Raspberry Pis together in Nextcloud can really use and then look into new technologies, learn and build something up. Same as here in Asia, these are our friends from FOSS Asia who really make Nextcloud available to a um, lot of people, students who just want to learn something and again have access to great open source um, technology. Another area where Nextcloud is super successful is in, with governments. So a um, lot of governments all over Europe or all over the world are actually using Nextcloud to protect their data. Digital sovereignty is the keyword here. They really want to keep and stay in control of everything. And that's something where Nextcloud is also works very, very well. And last but not least, of course, for all kinds of other organizations and enterprises. So if you want to do remote work, for example, <clears throat> everything is nowadays a lot more remote than before COVID. Um, you really want to have a paperless office. You want to really want to work from wherever you are and you have everything available, all your communication, all your collaboration tools. And this is another area where Nextcloud is super popular. So I'm really happy to say that Nextcloud in the last few years really grew to the biggest alternative to the Microsoft 365 or Google Workspace solution. So we are the leading competitor to them, which I think is really awesome. But now let's talk about the things that I think you're really interested in, which are the news we have here today. So as you know, we have Nextcloud Hub, which is a nice integrated product where everything comes together. And today I'm really happy that we can announce the new version, which is Nextcloud Hub 3, so the next major step for us to bring us forward. And there's really a ton of improvements all over the place that went into this release. Um, we structured them in 10 areas, so we actually have 10 big improvements here that really make significant steps forward. And I would like to invite Nimisha and Jan from our design team to talk about the first one. Hello, everyone. So, as you know, Design is very important to us at Nextcloud to be competitive, yeah, to proprietary solutions and all sorts of solutions out there. So we put a really big importance on it. And yeah, you can probably tell from our product. Um, and yeah, I'm really happy to uh, show to you today, together with Nimisha, uh, how we improved for Nextcloud Hub 3. So yeah, we spend, nowadays we spend a lot of time in front of computers. Yeah, we do it for personal stuff, for work, for entertainment or anything. And so, yeah, a lot of time is spent in front of screens. So it's really important that software gets out of our way, that it allows us to get our work done quickly and to our satisfaction, and also maybe that we have a little bit of fun. Yeah? So I think, I think we, can, we can have that as well. And because of that, we have uh, four main principles in Nextcloud for Nextcloud design that we follow. So the first one is that we focus on the content. Yeah, your stuff is always front and center, be it your contacts, be it your talk conversations, be it your calendar events, anything you want to work with, your work should be the main thing in Nextcloud, and you should be able to get your work done. Yeah, that is always the focus. So the second thing is ease of use. You heard it before. Um, it's, Nextcloud should be very easy to use. Yeah, it should get out of the way. Yeah, it should be able to, it should work without any setting any settings or anything. I mean, we, of course, have settings. Yeah, don't worry about that. And you can <laughs> modify some. But the defaults should work for you, should work for most people. Yeah, and uh, it should just, should just work easily. And then the third thing is that it, we should have great accessibility. Yeah, Nextcloud should be uh, accessible, should be usable by everyone. It yeah, should be able to use by people with, with uh, vision impairments, with motor impairments, no matter whether you use a screen reader, for example, or whether you like to use Nextcloud keyboard only, for example, it should all work. Yeah, it should work for everyone and uh, yeah, should be accessible for everyone. And the fourth principle, one that we really focused on for this release a bit more, is that you should be able to make Nextcloud your own. Yeah? You should be able to customize it a little bit, style it to your liking, so that it really feels a bit more like, like home or like a place you, you, you get to, like, a, like your, your office desk maybe, yeah? or your home office desk, so that, you, that it doesn't just feel very cold or whatever, like, a, like any old software, basically. So uh, this is why uh, uh, we're very happy to introduce uh, the new Nextcloud design and UX, which we call Nextcloud Personal. 
And um, to show you more about uh, how that looks like and how that works like, um, I'll hand over to Nimisha. Uh, thank you, Jan. So um, this, I'm sure all of you recognize this, it's the dashboard. It's familiar, we all know it, we all love it. And I'm sure all of you have, you know, maybe customized your dashboard a little bit by setting your own little background there and, you know, made a little bit of your own. So with the new design, um, the, back the background is now more visible in all of your apps. So, you know, you can um, really play around with it. The focus is still on the content while still having a little bit of fun by showing the background a little bit. Um, you know, in the navigation, you can still, you know, open your files, do whatever you want with it. And when you change your background, that's going to shine through a little bit as well. So let's see a little more of it. This is how it looks in the activity. You're going to see way more of this in the upcoming sections in Mail, Talk, and all of the other apps. Um, so in this release, we also did a lot of improvements with accessibility. As Jan said, it's a very important value to us. And now it can be easily accessed from the top right-hand menu. And this is also the section where we can play around with all the backgrounds. So let's see how some of that looks. So you can change it to something super colorful, like this bright pink background over here, you know, and, you know, obviously you can still, you know, set your notifications or whatever, um, while you can still see that it's shining through a little bit just on the background. Or you can go some, for something a little bit more mellow and autumnal, like in Christine's profile over here. And of course, we didn't forget dark mode. I mean, we're at the next core conference. How could we forget the dark mode? Um, we can have a bright pink background over here, and it looks great. And what you've all been waiting for, for the real darkness, dark background, dark mode. We're all real hackers here, let's face it. <laughs> So this is the new Nextcloud design. Feel free to play around with it and really make it your own. Welcome to new Nextcloud. <laughs> so next <laughs> So let's invite Fabrice onto the stage for the next improvement. Thank you, Nimisha. Right. Check, check. Yes. So I have the honor to talk about our second big improvement of Nextcloud 25, which is the Photos app. So photos are probably our most important data. So they carry our memories, they show our loved ones, and we share the moments with others. So photos are dear to us, and they will stay dear to us forever. And photos in the past were always private and under your control, but we are moving to this digital situation where we have digital pictures and they are moving online. And it seems that for managing photos, we are trapped in these proprietary systems like the, the, from Google and Apple. With Nextcloud, we want to change that, and so today we are announcing Nextcloud Photos 2.0. So in Photos 2.0, 2.0, oh. <laughs> <laughs> we are introducing a tile view. And the first thing you might notice is the massive performance improvement there. So you have all these tiles nicely fitted together uh, for your viewing pleasure at an enjoyable speed. But also, we, you asked and we delivered, we are introducing albums. Now you can collect and share your photos, and uh, showing and sharing your photos is seriously a breeze. So you can do so by, um, you know, sharing that with somebody you know, but you can also use uh, a public link like we do with this event, so you can upload your pictures there, uh, and the easy sharing of photo is made possible with that. All right, we have an auto-upload function for photos uh, from the clients, but for those moments when you need to upload the photos manually, we now support direct uploading of your pictures via the Photos app, so no more fiddling in file management, directly via the Photos app. And last but not least, we are introducing this built-in photo editor, which is offering a fast array of features and filters for editing and touching up all of those favorite cat photos of yours. So, for example, you, you can make some drawings here, or you can do some cropping and resizing. Uh, perhaps you have like that tiny, eeny, teeny, weeny touch you want to make to your cat picture. And if you, are, if you desire to do so, you can use any filter we provides you within the built-in editor for use. So we made a little video and we're showcasing to you the new Photos app. Photos of our friends, vacations and memories are some of our most precious data. And Nextcloud Photos makes them easily accessible. We made the new Photos app a lot faster and introduced a new layout for the photos. 
This release also comes with a new photo editor. The editor can do a lot of common things, like scale and crop, draw, apply filters and more. Another improvement we made is the introduction of albums. You can sort your pictures in albums and a picture can be in multiple albums. You can add photos from your computer directly in Photos now, from the Albums view, from Folders or from the Photos view. These albums can be shared with friends, family members or co-workers, who can put in their own pictures. You can find albums shared with you here. We hope you enjoy the new Nextload photos and enjoy the memories. And starting with security, of course, security is always one of the most important things for Nextload users because we care about privacy or as a business we care about compliance. You can't really have either of those if you do not have security and keep your files encrypted. So let's talk about that. And encryption is one of the areas where we made a number of improvements that I want to go over. Now, there are three kinds of encryptions essentially that are relevant for Nextcloud. First is the HTTPS, the transport encryption. This is handled by the web server, kind of below Nextcloud. Second, we have the server-side encryption, which is to, supposed to keep your data securely encrypted while it is on storage. And then third, we have the end-to-end -end encryption or client-side encryption, which encrypts your files on the client before it is even sent to the server. Now, let's start with the server-side encryption. So we made four improvements here. First, there's primary storage on Nextcloud and external storage. And it used to be that you can only encrypt external storage uh, with end-to-end -end encryption if it was object storage. And now we also enable the support for object encrypted object storage for primary storage. Then second, uh, group folders are now supported. So group folders will be end-to-end -end encrypted as, or um, server-side encrypted as well. Third, we optimized the encryption to use 33% less storage, which is quite a difference, of course. I mean, storage costs money. And last but not least, there have been a number of improvements for the OCC command to make it easier uh, to manage the encryption on the server. So let's talk about the other side, the end-to-end -end encryption. So there are three major improvements there. First of all, performance. We really improved the performance massively by reducing the number of database queries and improving the locking so that when you're syncing a lot of files that are end-to-end -end encrypted on your mobile client or on your desktop, it goes a lot faster than it used to and it puts less load on the server, which is of course also helpful. Second, we introduced a key management setting for users. So of course the idea of end-to-end -end encryption is you remember the key that is used to encrypt your data because if you forget it, then you can't access your files anymore. That's still the case, but if you forgot it, and well, there's nothing you can do, but you still want to encrypt at least your new files, you can reset the key, and again, this loses your old data, but you will then be able to use end-to-end -end encryption again. Again, don't lose your key, but if you do, you can now reset it. Last but not least, we added a number of options for administrators. They can now control which groups or individual people have access to the end-to-end -end encryption feature, and they can also configure what clients have access to it. So that's encryption improvements in Excel Hub 3. Let's talk a little bit about performance. Now, performance, of course, is very important, and we always work on making Excel faster and more scalable. And this release has a ton of improvements, um, more than 33 in the core alone. Uh, obviously, I can't talk about all of those. That's just a bit more than, well, we all have time for. So I'm going to pick out a few um, to talk about. And the first of those is uh, recent files. Just as an example, it's a small thing. But of course, you sometimes need to show recently changed files to the user. And it used to be that Nextcloud would then sort all your files and take the recent ones. But if you have a few million files, well, that can take a while. And so an optimization was done where essentially the process is split in two. First look at the files changed in the last 20 days, and then you sort those. And well, sorting goes a lot quicker that way. So it's a little thing, but the difference just in this feature is a factor 20 uh, in terms of the time it takes, which is of course a big improvement. Now another 
smallish but already more often used feature is searching. So when you search uh, for files, for tasks, for notes, for collectives, for chat messages, etc., in Nextcloud, uh, the server, of course, well, the client asks the server, the server does a bunch of database queries to find the stuff, and the team worked on reducing these queries by a factor 10, um, which means you get your results quicker and the server is less loaded from the search. Now again, these are two very specific scenarios. So what about things that happen all the time? So there's one operation that the server is busy with a pretty big chunk of the time. It's called a prop find. I know it's very technical, you can forget about the name. The point of it is, this is what the clients use to kind of stay in contact with the server. They ask for updates, they say, is something changed in this folder? These operations are really used a lot. And we managed to shave off about 25, 30% of the database queries for these operations. And because it's a really big part of the work a server is doing, this has a real impact on end users. Now, talking of end users, let's talk about something that's even more visible, loading of apps. So all these 33 changes, they add up, at least, well, in many areas, but in one place, they're very noticeable. When you upgrade your Nextcloud to Nextcloud Hub 3, you will notice that applications load about 25, 30% faster. And when you're switching between the Photos app and the, you know, the Contacts app, the Mail app, Talk, et cetera, you're constantly loading these pages, and this really, I don't know, I really appreciate it when we update our internal server, because it's really noticeably snappier. So, that's a performance improvement. That's how you as a user will notice it. Of course, as an administrator, that means you can have more users on the same server, and all these users still have a good experience. But there's a third party that benefits because there are hundreds of thousands of Nextcloud servers on the internet, and they're, of course, coming with a significant carbon footprint. And if the servers have to do less work to get the same result for the users, that also helps save a couple of trees, which I think is also a good thing. Now, there have been many more changes in Nextcloud, too much to mention. For example, you can now search files by tag. There are improvements to the group folders. Um, the viewer app now works on public links, dozens more things. But instead of talking about all the small things, we have Anna here who's going to talk about big stuff. Anna. Hi. I'm here to tell you about the improvements that we've done to Mail. Mail is our integrated client where you can work with our, uh, your emails. So let's get right into it. We have made some performance improvements and we have also made some design changes. So we pulled all the beautiful designs that you've seen before into Mail as well. And we have added, for example, a quick menus action item here where you can reply, favorite, save your emails really quickly. Um, then we have also added a new unread counter, which you can see here. It makes it super easy to see which emails you haven't read yet. We have also added a preview for the subject of the email. Then we have streamlined the account setup, which now is super easy to do. Just three fields, first name, email, password. Easy, done. This is what it looks like close up. And then we have a super cool feature which I've worked on and I'm super happy with, uh, which is accept and decline for email uh, invitations for calendar. It integrates with your Nextcloud calendar as well. So the work you do is much faster. Then you can uh, view PDFs and other documents directly from mail without having to download them. We have added image support for signatures, so feel free to put anything you want there. You have to enable the rich text option for mail to do so, but nothing stands in the way of having a cat meme as a signature now, so feel free to do so. The next feature we have is the out of office replies, which works on the Civ extension for IMAP. Uh, you can set your date, uh, you can set how often you want an email to be replied to, uh, you can let your colleagues know that you're not here and won't be reading their emails, so feel free to use it, try it out, give it a shot. We have also added uh, support for duplicating calendar events now, which also saves you a ton of time. And last, next is the appointments feature. If you don't know, we have a feature where you can uh, set slots for meetings, you can find this on your profile. Um, you can share your appointments via your profile or via link, and this is what the new page looks like. It's a bit more streamlined now, and it just has a shiny new look. Last but not least, we have an organizer feature in Contacts, which works on the manager property. It will auto-populate uh, the org chart for you. This is what it looks like close up. I think it's a very, very cool feature, and thanks for the community for the contribution on this. We also made a small video, so please enjoy. Welcome to Nextlog Mail 2.0. 
Nextcloud Mail ist a super easy to use, powerful and integrated mail solution for Nextcloud. In Nextcloud Mail 2.0, we made a lot of usability improvements and added powerful new features that make your life easier. For example, you can now accept a calendar invitation directly from an email. And you can view images, PDFs and other files with the built-in viewer. In the settings, you can now use rich text and add images to your signature. Note that you of course first have to have the rich text option below enabled. We also included an autoresponder you can configure easily. Last but not least, setting up a new email account has become a ton easier. Let me walk you through setting up a Gmail account. In an organization, this setting can be automatically pre-configured. As you can see, Nextlot Mail has become a lot easier to use. We hope you will enjoy the improvements. Yeah, so I hope you'll give Mail a shot and I'd like to ask... <laughs> and I'd like to ask to be us on stage. There we go. Thank you, Anna. Yeah, let's talk about clients. Um, as you know, Linux uh, client uh, offers a right, uh, variety of range for clients, uh, desktop on uh, Windows, Linux, and Mac, mobile on Android and iOS, both for files and both for, also for talk. Yeah, I will just now show you some of our cool new features for Nextout 25, and we'll start with the desktop client. There we also improved lots of things. Most notably, I think it is in the not notification area where you can now directly reply to chat messages. But there's also one thing, especially for Windows, which is very, very visible, which is improving the virtual files area. You might know that the virtual file system means that you do not have to download all files to keep them in sync, but you only will download and sync those files that you need, which costs, uh, saves you your precious uh, hard disk space. And this is how it looks like in the old way. So you have a bunch of photos, but you don't see which photos they actually are. And now we have, have uh, implemented the way that they will show, we, the, they are, we will see the thumbnails when they are available on the server. So I think that's a really good improvement for the UX uh, to browse all of your famous uh, vacation video uh, photos. On Android, we have uh, introduced a better gallery view, similar to uh, the Photos 2.0 version on the server. We have also the tile view, so it is not now uh, cropped like the thumbnails, but it's really showing the entire photo in a reduced way. And it is grouped by month, so you can easily scroll through the, your uh, history to go to the latest uh, vacation, for example. And on the right side, you see the option menu, so you can uh, limit the uh, media uh, view to only photos, only videos, or also to only a specific media folder. So for example, your latest uh, family meetup where you want to show it to somebody else. On iOS, we did a, uh, sorry, this again next, another Android uh, slide. Yeah, we also changed the UI for um, Android with a new Material Design 3, which is um, yeah, a very new modern uh, system. And we are using the primary color still for this, not the um, personal color, but it also comes with a better Dark Knights uh, support. On iOS, we also changed quite a lot. On, uh, you can see on the left side, we have a new uh, files view with a toolbar and also a unified search. So uh, if you search for something, you see not only the files, but you also the text occurrence in the no notes, in deck cards, in maybe upcoming events. So that's really easy to uh, use. In the middle, you see the new photo details view, also with the locking files as a support. So if you want to edit this manually on the uh, device, you can lock the uh, file first and then down, uh, edit it without distraction. And on the right, you see our new built-in PDF viewer. Yeah, and overall, we also changed quite a lot on the UI. So you see on the left, a new sharing view. In the middle, we overhauled our activity and also did some kind uh, of small improvements on the gallery view. On Nextcloud Talk, we introduced a search in the mobile app. The search works across the conversation title and within the messages. And when you click on it, you will ju jump directly to the corresponding conversation right at the point so you don't have to manually scroll through the uh, conversation list. 
And now for something else, you are likely know that this is our dashboard, which was introduced with Next 20, showing you recent information and other relevant informations like unread or important emails. But with this release, we will now bring this from the UI, uh, from the web, to your de uh, mobile devices, so you can just directly add them uh, um, to your home screen on iOS and Android, as you can see here now. And uh, yeah, I think that's a really cool thing, because you do not have to uh, open up your web browser to stay in touch with your uh, next dot with uh, yeah, recent changes. As you can see, this is on the mobile with barely fitting only one uh, widget, but you can also use it on a tablet, making it a real true productivity monster. For example, on the left, we have recent status, we have upcoming cards, we have a, a cool uh, shortcut view for taking um, a recording voice messages going directly to the um, file listing. All, by, all while you're chatting on the right side with the overlaid Nextdoor Talk app. So I think this is really uh, making a great progress and enhancing your productivity on the uh, tablets. And as a small reminder, what you have since quite a while, you can of course use split by split view. So chatting on the right side while working collaboratively on the left side with the Nextcloud Files app, both on Android and iOS, it's possible. So I hope that these improvements will uh, enhance your productivity at home on the, on the go. And yeah, then I will ask Nemisha for the next improvements on stage. Uh, right, so I'm going to talk about more improvements for talk. So um, as you know, talk is our integrated communication platform where you can you know, message people, like talk to people, video call. The works, we also support emojis, message replies, background blurring, and so much more. So for this release, we focused a lot on digital well-being. So as Jan mentioned before, we're in front of our screens a lot um, all the time, and we're bombarded with notifications and messages all the time. And that might really like, you know, impact our health or well-being. So for this release, we've tried to help you manage that a little bit better. Um, like for example, this feature, which is silent calls. So as you may know, when you call someone, uh, their phone rings. And when you, call, uh, when you start a call in a big group conversation, everyone's phone rings. And sometimes you may not want that. So with this nifty little feature, you can start a call in a group chat or one-on-one -on -one without really notifying the other person. But of course, if you do want to notify them, you can always send, a, send in a little call notification for each participant, and that will ring their phone. Uh, along the same lines, you can also send a message without notification, so you can just slip someone a little note and they can check it in their own time. And that's right next to the send button over there. Um, also, you may know that Nextar allows you to set your working hours uh, so that colleagues know when to schedule their meetings and they're not scheduling meetings at like 12 a.m. or something like that. And uh, you can also set your status on Nextcloud. And we've also had uh, automatically setting do not disturb outside of your working hours so that you're not getting notifications when you're chilling with your cat at home. To also protect your privacy, we have expiring messages now. So you can set your, the message expiration time in the conversation settings, for example, one day. And every time you send a message in the conversation, it's automatically going to disappear after one day. Um, another really cool thing are widgets. So widgets are these little cool cards that show up whenever you share something in a conversation. It can be a deck card, like over here. It can also be a GitHub issue, a YouTube link, anything you want. And it looks really nicely um, right below the uh, message over here. And to improve collaboration, we can also now create documents or any new thing, actually, from right within the chat. So if you want meeting notes, Two clicks, that's all it takes. You don't have to create, you have to open your files and create a new file and then share it over here. You can just create one from right within the chat. And of course, we also support templates as well. So you can do anything you want super quickly. Um, another really, really cool feature is polls. So how often had you had to exchange like 50 messages to discuss like one meeting time or something like that? So now we have polls and all you have to do is like, you know, set the questions, some options, and then you're done. Five minutes, boom, you know when you're gonna finally have your meeting. And obviously, we also support uh, anonymous responses. So uh, you're not going to know who's going to vote it until you close the poll in the end and only the final results are going to be short, as you can see. 
Um, with this release, there are also a lot of improvements to control who can do what in a conversation. For example, in a webinar, if you don't want people to spam the conversation with a lot of messages, you can set exactly that and uh, some specific permissions for ex the moderators or anything like that from the participants or from the conversation settings as well. Um, and you can, these are all the different options that are available for each uh, participant. Along the same lines, if you're an administrator, you can also control who can start new conversations or start video calls from your admin settings. For example, if you're a teacher and you want only the faculty to be able to you know, create group conversations or something like that, this is where you find that. And obviously, as always, we have a lot more performance improvements. So for really huge installations, you can now have calls with thousands of participants seamlessly because we have clustering now in our high performance backend. And also another improvement is to uh, improve phone dial-in without having to share a pin with every single participant. It's just one pin that you can share to everyone. And let's see all of this in action with a little video. Next Loud Talk is our integrated chat and video conferencing application making it easy to stay in touch with your colleagues, organize webinars, or have meetings. Talk introduces improvements to make it nicer and easier to use. For example, links get rendered as nice previews using widgets. This works on a variety of links, including content from within Nextcloud. We also added the ability to run a simple poll. You can add multiple answers and if you set it to private, Participants can only see the results once the poll is closed and they cannot see who voted what. Another improvement is that you can start working on documents with everybody right from within Talk. We all have busy lives ruled by notifications from our mobile devices. Talk now allows you to post a message that does not turn into a notification for everybody in the room. This is also available for calls, avoiding distractions and helping you and your team members to focus where it counts. But the opposite is also there. When you want to make sure your call is not missed, then you can re-ring participants. You can combine these features, start a call silently, but then only ring the device for the few who you'd like to notify. Another improvement is that we added message expiration. Your message will disappear after a set period. We also allowed moderators to control who can post messages and likes. This is of course also available on a per participant basis. This allows you, for a webinar, to close the chat for messages until a certain point in time when you would like to start a discussion or enable or disable chat for individual participants. Let us know what you think of the new talk. So that was talk. We really enjoyed working on the new features and we really hope you enjoy using them. So next, let's have Julius onto the stage. Thanks a lot. Um, yeah, I, I'm here to talk to you a bit about like what we worked on in text and collectives uh, during the announcement of Nextcloud Hub Free. So let's start off with collectives. Collective is our integrated and easy to use uh, knowledge management database and wiki. Um, it's perfect for organizing uh, the collaborative documentation that you may have in your organization or meeting notes or manuals that you may have around and need to work on in a team. Uh, so let's see what's new there in the new release. So first of all, we started improving the sidebar with the page list in it. Uh, it's now, now uh, more condensed, so you can list more pages in there, get a better overview of the structure of your collective. But further than that, we also added a custom page ordering, so you can, by dragging and dropping around the pages, you can sort them, you can put them into subdirectories. Uh, and that makes it a lot, of e a lot easier to structure uh, your whole uh, knowledge base. And in addition to that, as you can see on the left, there's also page emojis coming. So uh, for each page, you can set a dedicated emoji, which makes it a lot easier to find as a user then. Then the next features are more about working collaboratively. So first of all, we started adding mentions. 
Um, so if you have uh, meeting notes and want to make action items, want to mention a user there, then you can easily do that by putting the name into the collective page. And then the users will also receive a notification that they get aware of that. Um, furthermore, we also improved the embedding of files. Uh, until right now, it was possible to embed images into the collective page. But now it's also possible with other, uh, other file types like documents. The next thing we worked on is uh, also improving your browsing experience on the collective page. It is a table of contents view that you get for each page. You can either show or hide it with the button in the headings menu. And as you can see, it adds a headline for each of the headings that you have on your document, which make, makes it a lot easier to navigate around and yeah, find the thing on the page that you're looking for more quickly. Then, uh, in case there's the yeah, the word you're looking for is not on the page. Uh, it might be somewhere else in the collective. And for that, we added full text search. So every page in the collective is now indexed. Um, and you can use the unified search uh, in the top right corner as you're used to, just to get to the content you're looking for. And as you may know, um, text or a uh, powerful uh, rich text editor that uses markdown files is uh, kind of the, the baseline for collectives. So all of the improvements that I showed you earlier will also become available in, in the text app. So you can use mentions there. Uh, you also get the table of contents view, the file embeddings. Uh, but that's not all. Uh, we also worked on an improved print view. So in case you need to still print out a paper, if you like reading on that, or need to hand it to German bureaucracy, maybe, uh, then you get this nicely, nicely rendered view as you have it in the web as well. And could also use that for exporting to PDFs, for example, which might be a more common use case than printing. Um, <laughs> and there has also been some more work in the background done by the community in regards of handling markdown. Uh, so we um, worked on preserving the syntax of external editors uh, more nicely now. And we also added support for front matter, like a more advanced markdown syntax. And yeah, I mean, Misha showed you the nice link previous that we have in talk now. Uh, and of course, we also added that to text. So all of the widgets that we have there uh, for deck cards, for files, YouTube videos, uh, will also be supported in text, of course. And yeah, of course, we made a small screencast to walk you through the features. And yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Nextcloud includes an excellent knowledge base app that helps you share manuals and documentation within your organization or team. With this release, many improvements were made. For example, you can now reorder pages and assign emojis to them. You can now also insert various files into a document, not just images. Another improvement is that you can now mention colleagues. These features also work in text, the distraction-free Nextcloud editor for notes and thoughts. If you have a long document, you can see an outline to find what you're looking for. Of course, if the content you seek is in another document, you can use the universal search in Nextcloud, which now searches also in the content of our knowledge base. We hope you will enjoy using the new and improved collectives. All right, with all these improvements, we of course hope that uh, like the connective knowledge in your organization will become even more accessible. And I would like to hand over to Daphne for the next section. Hello, everyone. How do we enable you to use Nextcloud seamlessly with other software? How do we open up Nextcloud for integrations? And how can you create apps for Nextcloud? After the next four minutes and roughly 28 seconds, you will know how Nextcloud is planning to massively increase its number of use cases. 
As you might know, six years ago, Nextcloud was only a file sync and share solution, just like Dropbox is still only today. But of course, no one only wants to store files, you also want to do something with them, right? So that's why we moved into collaboration software. So this came with softwares like Office or Groupware, and we bundled them all together into Hub. And at Nextcloud, we realized that the open source strategy is a uniquely strategic position to open up Nextcloud to more functionality and the external ecosystem. So this is why today we are taking the next step. We want to envision software to radically open up. So how can we do that? We have two ways to do so at Nextcloud. In the one hand, we will integrate Nextcloud with other softwares you may use in parallel. On the other hand, we want to improve our ecosystem so everyone in this room and on the live stream would be able to develop their own apps for functionality you need yourself. Now, let's start with the integrations. So, what could such an integration look like? Well, it could be to bring Nextcloud into the software of the external software. And this is what we did in the last months for Zimbra. No, for WebEx. And not Zimbra, that's later. <laughs> WebEx, imagine you are having a video call. And in the sidebar, you can see your Nextcloud files, you can create new files, and you can also edit them. And this is great if you want to make meeting minutes or if you want to create a report together. But an integration could also take place in both softwares. And this is what we did for Zimbra. Now I'm allowed to talk about Zimbra. And Zimbra is a neat integration because in Nextcloud, you can see and search your Zimbra events, your Zimbra emails, and your Zimbra contacts. And in, next, uh, in Zimbra itself, you can uh, create talk meetings uh, for Nextcloud. Another interesting example is our open project integration. Open project is an open source project management tool. And we developed for Nextcloud that you can see your projects in the dashboard. You can search your projects in Nextcloud search. And also in files, there is a sidebar where you can connect your documents to an open project project. And the document relations between these documents in Nextcloud and your open project projects, these relations are then visible in the open project UI. And then another example, we have Nuitech Stage. And this integration brings the whiteboard technology of uh, Nuitech into Nextcloud. And lastly, we improved our existing integrations with Microsoft OneDrive and Google Drive. So for all of you who are still using Google or Microsoft and you obviously want to change to Nextcloud, you can now import your data with just a few clicks. Now, let's talk about how we can create an ecosystem where everybody can contribute apps. The Nextcloud developer program comes with a dedicated website on nextcloud.com slash developer. So, are you wondering how to use our APIs or how to create your own dashboard widget or how to upload your app to the App Store? You can find all the information you are looking for on this website. But we are not stopping there. We want to improve this further. So what is going to be the next step? With the next step in the upcoming months, we are planning to release a series of tutorials that will take you all the way from the beginning to how to set up your development environment to the next steps to develop several different types of apps. And two of those tutorials are already live. The first one is how to set up a development environment, not only for Mac, but also for Ubuntu. We have a tutorial available. And the second tutorial is how to develop a simple files plugin. And we will present these tutorials to you later today during the workshop, how to develop your first app. And you can also find them on nextcloud.com slash developer. So 
do you miss functionality in Nextcloud and are you interested in building it, then follow the workshop or go to the website. Now let's welcome Frank back on the stage for the next two big improvements. Great, what do you think so far? It's not bad, right? <laughs> A lot, lot of good stuff in, in all areas. I'm really happy about this release. Um, but there are two more things coming. I have the pleasure to introduce them to you now. The first is Office. <clears throat> so let's talk a little bit about the Office situation. Because obviously a key part of a collaboration platform like Nextcloud is that you should be able to edit your Office documents. Like text documents or spreadsheets, presentations, diagrams, everything you want. And as you know, we have an integration with all kinds of different solutions, and they're all there, there and great, and we like them. But what we wanted to have is have one which is like especially good and especially well integrated. And this is why a few months ago we created Nextcloud Office. Nextcloud Office is something we do in collaboration with our friends from Colabra and LibreOffice. Um, and we are working together with them. Um, to build this very nicely integrated solution, which is really um, super fast and, and yeah, integrated and nice to use. All of that happens uh, upstream, so this is not a fork. The next slide obviously is not a fork of, of something else, but this is something where we really invest in. So we hired a dedicated team over the last 12 months who is just working on this kind of integration to ne make next slide office really, really good. <clears throat> this is really important because I mentioned earlier, Nextcloud is really used by a lot of governments and like big organizations to work with their documents. And the question is, of course, for us always, okay, what is important? What is the focus here? What we should, uh, what we should improve? And because of that, we created an advisory board where we actually have representatives from lots of different government organizations all over Europe telling us what is important. And we take this input and make like Nextcloud Office as absolutely as good as possible. So what we did the last few months is we took the existing code and together with our colleagues from Colabra, we redid the complete user interface. So as you can see, it really looks um, very smooth and um, with nicer icons, nicer fonts, more JavaScript client-side rendering and so on. And yeah, it also looks a bit similar to the solutions defined somewhere else to make it just um, yeah, easy for everybody to use. It's also improved the performance a lot. It's the integration is there. You can directly pick a file from Nextcloud files and add it to a, to a Word or Excel document or whatever you want to do. So it's very nicely integrated. But today, of course, we want to take the next step and make it even better. So the first thing we are introducing today are custom fonts. Because Nextcloud Office already comes with a bunch of nice default fonts that everybody can use. But there are some challenges to it. The first is, maybe in your organization you have some corporate font, some special font that you always want to use for all your letters, for everything. Now we have the option for the admin to just upload it and every user is able to use your custom font in all your documents. The second thing is that for really the best compatibility with Microsoft or Google products, you really want to have the same fonts in your documents, otherwise the text might flow differently. And there you can also upload your Microsoft fonts or whatever you have in your documents to really have the best compatibility. Yeah, and it's really nice. I mean, you can just upload it, delete it, and this is, it needs to be done only once by the admin, and it's really available for every user. The next is this integration we already heard about earlier, that we really made Nextcloud Office available in all the different places um, where it makes sense. Here we are, as we heard earlier, we're in a chat conversation or we might be in a video call and in the middle of the conversation of the call we think, okay, someone should write re meeting notes. Then you can just go to this menu and say like new text file, for example, or new um, um, spreadsheet or whatever, and it, there's a new document opened. And of course, you can select the templates we have. And these templates can be custom, so everybody can have their own templates. It's like, when I'm meeting notes, there should always be like that, for example, um, or they can be pre-configured by the administrator for the whole organization. Or if you're in a conversation and then you say, okay, now we need to do some drawing, some brainstorming, then of course there's also the, the, the new diagram feature where you can do collaborative drawings in a, in a document. And again, you can start it directly from, from this conversation. Then, the next thing I want to show you is secure view. 
So that's a feature that we have for a while, but it's greatly improved in this release. So sometimes you have the challenge that you want to show someone a document, but a person should only be um, allowed to view it, but not to download it or to reshare it or just do nothing with it, but just to view it. Again, that's a requirement we hear a lot with confidential information. Some organizations have confidential information. It should be possible to show someone just a document without the option to get it. And there we have this option here, allow download, that you can enable or disable as you want. And if you disable it, the user just gets this view where you see the document, but as you can see on top, there's no way to edit it. So it's just a, a read-only view. And this release, we make it also possible for internal users, because not only with share links, but also inside your organization, someone maybe someone is just allowed to, share doc, uh, to read the document, but nothing else. So if you look a bit closer, then you see there's even a bit more here, which are these watermarks here. Because way, one way where a document can leak is, of course, if someone makes screenshots of a secret document. But here we have this option to add watermarks to it, which then will also be in the screenshot. And this is something that can be enforced by the admin. So the admin can say, every document that is tagged with confidential or something, or everything a certain uh, LDAP user group does, or some other conditions, always should have these watermarks in it to prevent um, yeah, leakage of confidential documents. That brings me to the last point, which I personally find like the coolest and the most interesting one. The number one feedback we always get when we discuss um, with organizations, what can we do in Nextcloud Office to make it like as good as possible? The number one request is always, we need to have 100% document compatibility. Really, every document needs to work like absolutely same as with, I don't know, the Microsoft Office, for example. It really needs to be absolutely everything. And together with, again, with our friends from Collabra, we're improving this a lot with the fonts here in this release and in lot, lots of other ways. So we're really going from 90% compatibility to 95, to 98, to 99%, but we really want to have to 100%. So 99% is not enough. And sometimes there are really weird documents floating around with like embedded macros, super complicated embedded databases. A lot of crazy stuff is happening and uh, is possible in Office documents, believe me. And this is really something that is really hard to do 100%. But we really want to have to 100%. Okay? And by the way, um, we are not the only ones who are struggling with that. If you use the online version of Microsoft 365, they also don't support this stuff. And if you use it in, in, in Google Docs, also doesn't work but we really want to have a solution for that. And because of that, we introduce a new feature where we have this nice button here on top, which is uh, local editing. What you can do, you can press this button and then you get a dialog which asks you, do you really want to um, um, edit this document locally? And if you cl uh, click yes, then what happens is that the document is automatically transferred to the client via our desktop client. It's locked on the server, so no one else can touch it in the meantime, so you don't have any conflicts. And it just opens with your local editor, which then has all the functionalities. Here, for example, LibreOffice that you can use. And of course, LibreOffice has a lot more features, so mail merge and other crazy stuff. They can do everything you want. And when the your document closed, when, it's the, when you close the document, our desktop client notices this automatically, pushes the document back to the server, and unlocks it, and everything is as with before, and you can keep on working in the browser together with other people. And of course, this works not only with LibreOffice, but if you really want to prefer to use like Microsoft Office as legacy product, maybe, <laughs> then, and it just opens the native editor, right? It just also then opens Microsoft Word, and it is really compatible with everything because this is Microsoft Word. And if it closes it, it pushes it back to the server. So I think this solution, it really makes sure that we're 100% compatible with everything. But that's not all. We want to do a little bit more even because there are also other document types where we have at the moment, uh, where it's at the moment not possible to edit them directly in the browser. Just one example, here is a PSD file, a Photoshop file. 
but it can be all kinds of other proprietary format. But just take Photoshop as an example, and let's say I really want to edit this Photoshop file in Nextcloud. Then, as you see here, we have a, again the option, edit locally. You click on it. It locks the file, as you can see. It's now locked by me. Everybody sees it. That I'm, I'm working on this file at the moment. No one else can touch it. There will be no conflicts. Then it pushes it to the client. Photoshop opens in this example or any other document editor you prefer. You do what you want. And once you close it, it's pushed back to the server. And you see that it's updated and the log is removed. So this is, makes it just super easy to work with all kinds of document, whatever you prefer. What do you think? <laughs> okay, so let's talk about the last improvement we have. And this is for me a special one because this is a very, very strategic thing that we are doing. So I think intelligence in software is something that is really important. I think that technology should help us to manage our life as good as possible, to, to remove mental load, to automate boring things away from us, to just um, make our life better. That's the job of technology. But of course, technology should not take away any like, privacy from us or any control. We still want to know what's happening, but it really should help us. And this is why we're investing a lot in intelligence in Nextcloud. And there we have a bunch of examples how Nextcloud can really help us to, do, to be more productive and really take away mental load. First example is recommended files. This is something that you probably already know. This is the feature that on top of the files list, you have these recommended files, and then based on behavior and change and who is editing what, it basically just recommends some files to you. So you don't really have to look into all the subfolders if the system already knows what you want to do and recommends it to you, and then you can access the file with one click. So that's the first thing. That's, but again, as I said, it exists already. But this is the direction we are going. Another example is the share recommendations. Right? If you want to share a file with someone, you have here in the share dialog, um, you have recommendations. So before even typing a single character, where we have the autocomplete, obviously, it already suggested some names because you might have shared the same kind of document with the same user in the past, and it already knows that you might do that. And again, with just one click, you can click on the, on the, on the person. Another thing is mail is inbox. As you know, I mean, most of you, at least I am getting a ton of emails, and it's sometimes like really um, exhausting to sort them and don't overlook something. And this is why we introduced the priority inbox which is the segment on top of your, ma of your mail, um, yeah, mail list, where you get, again, with some intelligence, with some machine learning, the uh, files, uh, the, the mails that are probably most important for you. So this is then recommended to you um, immediately. Next example is uh, suspicious logins. That's also a very fascinating feature, in my opinion. And this is, again, a neural network that's part of Nextcloud which analyzes the login behavior. So it basically analyzes who logs in from where doing what. And it trains it, and it then can detect if something unusual happens. For example, if a certain user logs in in the middle of the night from an IP address from China, then there is maybe something wrong. And this then can trigger all kinds of things, like a warning or two-factor authentication or some other things. So this is something that is actually cool. And this is another app that is actually recommended to install as part of Nextcloud Hub 3. But now let's look into the cool new things we are doing. And uh, the next thing is actually, if you really paid attention to the slides before, you probably might have known it. <laughs> because in the, in the Nextcloud uh, photo section from Fabrice, we actually didn't mention one thing which is especially cool, that's part of Nextcloud Photos now which is uh, object and face recognition that we can do now. So every photo you upload via uh, in Nextcloud Photos, again, with the auto-upload from your mobile or manually, um, we do face recognition, again, with some uh, machine learning component that is part of Nextcloud now, where it detects the different people that are in your photos. And if you click on a photo, you can then see all photos of this person. But this is super cool.
Another example is object recognition. So the system can really detect all kinds of objects. You can detect that this is an aircraft, that there's a basket here, that this is a beach, and so on. And it automatically tags then the files according to what it detects. So this is actually very useful because first of all, you can browse it like that. You can say, yeah, show me all dogs or show me all coffee photos or something. Um, but it also, of course, makes it possible to find it via the search. Because as you heard from yours earlier, um, you can now search, or the, the, the unified search includes text now too. So if you just go into the search and you type in dog, you see all the dog photos. But this is very cool, I think. <laughs> and this, um, this machine learning component can do even more. For example, if you manage your music collection in Nextcloud, then you can also detect automatically the music genre what this song is. And this is not using a database or something. It really looks into the music and detects, well, this is jazz or this is obviously rap or something else. So again, this is something cool if you really prefer to have your music in, in Nextcloud. The last but not least, I want to show you something that I think is in the day-to-day -day life very useful, which is related resources. So as you know, that in Nextcloud, we have all these different components. We have these files. We have calendar, chat messages, deck boards, and so on and so on. And sometimes, if you really work together in a big team, it's hard to really understand, OK, where is what deck board, which calendar is by whom. And we also added some intelligence here that here on the side, we have related resources. So this means that you're in this folder here at the moment. This is a project folder for some project. It automatically detects that there is other things. There's a, maybe a talk conversation, or there's a deck board, or a shared calendar, or something, which is related, because the same people have access to it, the same people are working on it, and it automatically recommends, well, related to these files is probably then this chat room. And this is, all, of course, also available from all directions. So in, again, if you're in this chat conversation, next to talk, it shows in the sidebar, again, all the related project management boards, or files or folders or whatever is related. So this is something which I think is, and this is just the beginning. We will invest in this kind of intelligence features a lot more. For my visionary in the future, Nextcloud can really take away a lot of boring things and a lot of thinking that we need to do just by, for doing our work and what we, we want to do and really use the, the power of uh, yeah, machine learning and all kinds of other intelligence to automate this kind of things. So. From my perspective, this is really the job of technology to make our life easier, to take away mental load, and really yeah, make us more productive and at the same time with less thinking. But of course, the key is that this all happens like on the machine as open source. So all these features are all working locally. There's nothing is sent to any machine learning cloud or some other server. This all happens on on your server, on your machine. If you follow the marketing from, I don't know, Amazon or Google or Microsoft, you might think that machine learning is only possible with their clouds. And that's, of course, bullshit. Right? That's really false, false marketing. This, all of that, what we can do, runs locally. It can run on a Raspberry Pi if you want. Really no data need to leak anywhere. Yeah, so this is the, the strategic direction we want, to, we want to take here. So this uh, wraps up Nextcloud Hub 3, which I think is really the biggest step forward that we did so far. It really rounds off a lot of edges, innovates in a lot of areas, and I'm really happy that we are able to be really innovative in a lot of areas, a lot better than what proprietary solutions can do, and this is really, really happy about that. There's today is a release candidate available, the final will be released in two weeks, but you can already test all of that, use this already now. If you're an app developer, if you already have an app for Nextcloud, you can use the opportunity also maybe during the conference to test everything to make sure that it's compatible with the new version. Um, and again, the final will be out in, in two weeks. So with all of that, um, I'm really happy that Nextcloud is a tool that is really useful for so, so many different kinds of people and scenarios. One is home, of course. I mean, we have 100,000 servers just 
not even users, users we don't know, but hundreds of thousands of servers on the internet, lots of home users who just run it to ha keep their own data and their communication under control. For education, as I showed earlier, it's very useful. There are tons of schools and universities who use Nextcloud, like government organizations. Again, in Germany, digitalization is a big topic, but please do it right. Not, that's, a, that's a big thing. Service providers, if you really want to run your own, like Microsoft Google competitor, just um, take Nextcloud, put it on your infrastructure, and you have it. Um, or if you're just a company in an organization who want to do remote work, maybe you know with COVID, you have more people doing home office work, and you want to have a nice collaboration tool, maybe you want to work towards a paperless office. Um, again, there's something where Nextcloud can help. So there's another last thing I want to talk about, which is how to install it and how to get it. So since the very, very beginning of it, it was always the goal to make installation as possible, as easy as possible for everybody. And there's a lot of software out there where I really need to, it's quite complicated. And there's always the focus to make it like crazy easy to, to install it. The core of, of Nextcloud is still easy, just put it on the web server and it works. But nowadays we have so many components that you also need to set up and configure. Collabra Online for Nextcloud Office, for example. Or maybe you want to have a Redis for caching, maybe you have a good database, or maybe you want to have a full text search component. Maybe you want to use the, our high performance backends for talk or for files for added functionality and speed. And it really gets a bit more complicated than that. And because of that, we created Nextcloud all in one, which is a, a Docker container image that you can just download, run wherever Docker runs and everything is pre-configured. Everything is already there. You don't need to, need to do anything. It's just, it just works with nice defaults, and yeah, everything is there. And there's already the things built in that are important for that. For example, updating the components. Obviously, updating needs to happen, so you can really update the different components here with a user interface. Don't need a command line at all. There's also Nextcloud backup built in, so if you want to backup the instance, uh, or restore it, that's also built in. Obviously, that's something you really want if you want to run it like pro uh, productively. So this is really like super nice to really set up in just a few minutes by everybody. Because again, our goal is to enable everybody to run their own instance, to decentralize the internet, and give you more privacy and security. But again, maybe running a, a Docker container is, even that is like too complicated. Um, then we want to make it even easier, and because of that we work with a bunch of cloud and service providers where this is all on their website and we can really deploy it with one click, and then you have your own instance running. So this is something we also do. Which brings me to the end of the presentation. I want to thank all of you for coming. Um, of course, this is just the beginning of the conference. We really have a, a lot of interesting talks, keynotes, workshops coming up. Um, I think it's really, really good. We really, we, we, we really, really good to have a, ti a good time, my God. We really to have a good time. <laughs> Let's change the world together. Really happy that we're back together in person. And um, thanks a lot for coming. But I think we still have a little bit of time. So if you want, we can still do a bit of a Q&A, a bit of a discussion, feedback from everybody, questions. And for that, I want to ask every speaker to come to the stage so that we can do this together. And you have the first question after two seconds. So it's good. So I'm the person with the microphone. Just raise your hands. I come to you, give you the microphone. And I will try to come to you. Give me a second. So I'm, I'm here. I'm coming over as soon as possible. Let me wait until all of my colleagues are there. All right, Jeroen. Hi, great stuff. I'm really enthusiastic about it. Uh, one question. Uh, so you can add it locally. Great, you lock it on the server. Okay, that's nice. But sometimes clients crash. I won't mention certain OS providers, but you know what I mean. And you have a locked file on your server and the client has forgotten all about it. What do you do then? 
Yes, so the file lock is normally only 30 minutes, or you can go on the web and manually unlock it again. So it is never like locked for eternity, so you have always a second chance. Or you just use your mobile device and unlock this same file. Hi, uh, Nextcloud Office looks great. Which future do you foresee for the only Office um, uh, uh, module? <laughs> okay, everybody gives me the microphone, I don't know why. Um, so, um, as I said earlier, we support different Office solutions. <clears throat> At the moment we support four, actually. Um, we support uh, only Office, we Collabra, which is now becomes Nextcloud Office. We actually support Microsoft Office Online also as a plugin, and we support Hancom Office, Hancom Office from South Korea exactly. And um, they all have their different pros and cons, and everything is supported. You can choose what you want. We decided that we want to have one nice default. This is like Nextcloud Office now, but if you want to use only Office, it's also supported. Sorry, Frank, this again comes back to you, eh? Uh, the microphone. But um, I, I, I got uh, kind of, I woke up when uh, you started talking about the, the face recognition. Is that stuff that, it's really exciting, is that stuff that is already in progress? Or like where and is it in terms of development? It's done and working. Okay. If you download the RC today, that's already included. It's already included. Okay, yes. cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Right. Everything, everything we showed today is done and it's working. We are not a big fan of pre-announcements. I mean, this time we pre-announced two weeks, okay, but the RC is done, and yeah, that's all working. Hi, uh, yeah, I've got a bit of a broader question because I'm uh, using Xdot mostly for for working with human rights organizations in in some of some developing countries and some really non-democratic countries, including like Russia. And so we always have the concern, can we actually uh, manage our, uh, can we actually ensure the safety of our deployments? So, so I wonder whether this is also a coming priority, whether kind of intrusion detection and prevention and ensuring this safety uh, of, of next cloud installations is also something you're, you're going to focus on. Uh, because, I mean, it, it, the problem is really that I'm not an IT professional. We don't have an uh, IT department which does all those things. So I just wonder whether this this is also something on your screen. Whether whether Nextcloud could also be more usable to 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 to, to organizations which are vulnerable. Um, yeah. Thank you for your question. It's really a good point. And so there's kind of a double answer to that question. Um, so first of all, of course. Uh, there are a lot of layers that Nextcloud builds on. Um, I already mentioned in my, my section of the talk, I talked about the HTTPS, which is essentially handled in the layers in the Nextcloud. So what we do is we have a number of checks and warnings that, you know, if you have a badly set up system, Nextcloud will warn you about it as far as it can detect this. Um, and of course, in Nextcloud itself, we do a lot of things. Uh, there's uh, two-factor authentication, for example, which you should, of course, absolutely use. Um, there are a couple of ways of doing it that include do, yeah, making it a little easier for the users, like using a notification that you can use your phone to approve the login rather than having to enter a code. Um, and you can, as administrator, you can enforce this. We have our suspicious login detection, which can be quite helpful. It uses a neural network to train on the login data of a user. And when it sees like an uncommon pattern, for example, the user always logs in you know, I mean, this is ideal for a nine to five job, so it might be a bit harder if you travel a lot, but if you often log in at a similar time from the same place and suddenly there's a login in the middle of the night from, you know, a different continent, there will be a notification to you, but also the administrator will get a notification. So there is a bit of monitoring and, and of course you have encryption features and other features. But at the same time, I don't want to say, I do want to say, if you're, you know, not an experienced admin, and you're worried about security and privacy, I really, really recommend to try to get somebody on board or get help from somebody who really has experience with this, because there's tons of stuff that Nexod, even if we wanted to, could not do, intrusion detection and other features. And so, I don't know, security is always as safe as the weakest link, as they say. Um, obviously, the user there is often a weak link, um, and there's a lot of training you need to do to users. 
And there also it means you need to know what needs to be done. So it's really important to try to get some external expertise to help you with this, because otherwise it's, yeah, no matter how much Nexa does, it's just risky business. I hope that answers the question. Okay, team, I got a question from a live stream. Uh, small question. It's about the Photos app. Uh, the question is, does it also support MP4 videos? Who knows? So, like the videos would basically show up in there. Uh, for the preview, it depends a bit on the server setup because, uh, yeah, that is up to the administrator to configure video preview generation, basically. Uh, but in general, that would be supported for displaying them in the, like when you click them, it depends if the browser supports the embedded codec inside of the video file, basically. So I hope that answers it. I have a small question. Uh, I see there is the release of this uh, Nextcloud Hub 3 and also Nextcloud 25. And uh, would you mind to uh, dig a bit in the relationship between them and the difference? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's a good one. Um, thanks for asking that. <laughs> so this is a bit, maybe you should explain the history here a little bit. Obviously, in the beginning, there were only like the normal version numbers, 10, 11, 12, 13, and we reached 25 by now. We also introduced Nextcloud Hub as a concept, which is this bundle of all these applications. So Nextcloud originally was only the files part, but Nextcloud Hub is like the bundle of talk and calendar and office and everything together. So this is why we introduced Nextcloud Hub number. We really want to move more to this Hub versioning. Like we have like Hub 3, and the next release will be Hub 4 and Hub 5, Hub 6. Again, for two reasons. One is for us, as also as Daphne explained, for this is the future from us, like this collaboration suite with all these components. This is where we want to go, and this is why we want to stick with Hub, not only the files part, which is the pure Nextcloud. And another reason is, um, <laughs> maybe that's a bit um, weird, but yeah, 25, 26, 27, it just gets a little bit high. Um, so we start to count this three now, Nextcloud Hub 3 is then the current release. The next, lot, the next one will be Hub 4 and so on. So again, moving to the hub concept first, and second is yeah, having more reasonable version numbers, basically. <laughs> yeah. Okay, team. Just to be clear, inside it is called 25, and at some point it will be called 678 or something, but that's just internal. That's the internal thing, which no user should care about. All right, team, I have an, another question uh, from, the li from the live stream. Uh, specific one, what machine learning component for face recognition is used? That's a very specific one. Do we have somebody on stage who can answer that? <laughs> Julius can guess something. <laughs> yeah, like I don't recall the exact uh, name of the library, but it's basically like a Node.js library that is quite common for uh, machine learning and then there are like pre-trained models uh, for like the object recognition and the the, the face recognition, um, and then there's like for grouping uh, the yeah faces together. There's like some clustering involved, um, but yeah, that uh, like of course it's all uh, free software. It's in in the repository of the recognition app, uh, recognize app. Sorry, uh, so yeah, feel free to check that out and have a look at that. Uh, I don't know if Marcel is here uh, already or if he's going to come. Ah, he's sick, sorry. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah, you can ask uh, Marcel Claire online. He worked on that. Yeah, you can look at the uh, Recognize app from Marcel. I think that's what it is, right? Uh, I had two questions. So first question is with the addition of related resources, does that mean that the existing project's functionality has been deprecated? Uh, I'll answer that. Uh, yes, uh, because uh, w when like while uh, using it or, or watching people use it, like we saw that it was much too complicated. Yeah, you need to do uh, all of that. You need to configure everything of that yourself. Yeah, we always sort of wanted to make it more automatic, and so since it's so very similar, uh, we decided we need to replace it because having two things for essentially the same thing is a bit complicated. So, um, well, of course, we, we can probably uh, improve on the, on, the, on the detection and everything, and, and yeah, we, we're gonna improve on that. Um, 
the, the, we think it's already much better than the existing thing, which is by default you don't have any thing related uh, there, uh, which now is fixed uh, by that you, that you have something there without needing to do stuff manually. Okay, I had one other question, which is on end-to-end -end encryption. And I understand that there's no timeline for the development of that app, but my question is, if you encrypt with it, is there any way to decrypt within the client side from the terminal, from anything, to recover those files without the server app? So, oh. so the server app of end-to-end -end encryption is basically just like a file drop. It's just storing the, the, the encrypted file within our normal Nextcloud storage. And next to it, that's what the internet encryption app is doing, they're just storing the metadata, which is also uh, like 95, 98% encrypted. So the server just gives to the client the metadata and the um, encrypted payload, and uh, the encryption is done on this uh, client side. So it's either on iOS, Android, or Windows, um, desktop clients. So um, yeah, the actual work uh, is done on client side, sorry. Yeah, the server is never involved, and um, of course the server has the, the uh, encryption keys, but they are also again encrypted, so uh, the server um, is, yeah, always like, we assume that it is hacked uh, and uh, well, done by a malicious admin, so the, uh, we never trust the server and all do locally on their clients. I think the question is that you were looking for a command line tool to do it, correct? Well, so the client decrypts, right, as long as it has the key. Um, if you lose the key, then all bets are lost. There's basically no way to recover. Um, in theory, a command line client could be written that is not the desktop client and does it, but that doesn't exist in the moment. So you just, yeah, your best bet is to use a desktop client. Next question. So um, Nextcloud has... Uh, uh, a few use cases. One is a small setup for um, a few users that can trust each other. One is for a company where um, everyone can sort of trust each other because they're bound by policy. Um, and I'm currently managing a Nextcloud instance for a huge community-based uh, organization with a low entry barrier and no uh, trust in, in compliance. And I noticed that it's very um, challenging to get Next cloud to avoid information leakage between users. Um, do you plan on improving it? Like, for example, what is shared by default in the profile, or if you um, create a uh, an event in the calendar, uh, you share email addresses of all attendees and so on, and that's not very transparent to especially non-technical users. So. With this kind of security and privacy, of course, always the question what the what the attack vector is. And there is also a certain, there is always a certain amount of trust that you have to give the administrator of the service you use. So we're trying to reduce this as possible. We just talked about end-to-end -end encryption, where the admin can has no way to see the files, not even the file names, nothing. What you're working on, and um, and then there are some additional configuration settings. That's probably what you mentioned that that are recommended to do. For example, you should disable um, the auto completion. Because with the auto completion, you could see which other people are on the same server, right? And um, there's some other things with profiles and, and other things to make sure that you don't really see other people that are there. But and we can get better there. But I just want to point out that there is a natural limit what we can do, because what an admin of the server can always do can you can always log from which IP address which user comes at what time, for example. This kind of metadata that can always be locked by the, by the admin. So a scenario where a user can use Nextcloud and the admin can, has no way to abuse anything, that's not really solvable. We're trying to make it as good as possible, again, with end-to-end -end encryption and with a lot of config settings to, yeah, to shut, to build like walls between the users and the user and the admin too. But, and we will get better there because we have this scenario. Um, we have a big service, well, we have several big service providers with millions of users. They have exactly that challenge that you also have. But there are some natural limits. So, yeah, the admin of a Nextcloud server can always see a little bit what's going on, unfortunately, just because they can see the network connections and stuff like that. 
I think it was very much about the users being able to see things from each other, right? Yeah, as Frank mentioned, for big service providers, we have this challenge. So there are some, yeah, the things he mentioned, like disabling autocomplete and the share settings are a couple of things. And there are some other parts of Nextcloud that will notice when these settings are set in a certain way and then, well, do the smart thing. But I think another thing to say, aside from those technical limitations, it's also kind of a conceptual thing that Nextcloud is just very much designed to facilitate sharing and collaboration. And so turning that off again is kind of, yeah, that, that's naturally conflicting sometimes and like the defaults will facilitate sharing because that's yeah, kind of the idea. Um, so at some point, if you really need a strong separation, then you will need to do you know, separate servers and things like that kind of tricks. Yeah, that's a but that's a good idea. By the way, um, you can have a setup where every user has uh, its own server. Why not? I mean, with something like Kubernetes, you can no problem with handling like a million um, containers. It would be possible. Yeah. And they can, and they will still be able to share if they want to via the federation features. So it's not they're completely disconnected because Nextcloud servers can always talk to each other. Um, I don't know, it's, it's just an idea because it's a fair bit of work, of course, and, and management, but there are solutions. It just depends on, on exactly what you need. So, any more questions? Yeah, yeah uh, ahoy. Let's talk about um, the intelligence feature once more. Um, <laughs> is it actually, uh, each neural network, is it configurable and switched off or even partially switched off? For example, talking about data frugality, if I do not want tags to be created. And will there be or are there already core features which uh, heavily rely on the intelligence feature? Um, so in, um, yeah, the, the main AI stuff is a suspicious login detection. I think that's really running a neural network on the login data to, well, predict if it might be a bad person trying to log in. And the second one, I think, is the one used. Which is an app you can switch off. Which is an app, yes, you can switch it off. If you don't want that. And then the other main part where a neural network is being trained is the, the face detection, etc., which is also an app that can be turned on and off. Uh, I'm, I don't think you can turn it off per user, though. I think it is an admin system-wide setting. And, of course, you can also remove the app if you want to be 100% sure nothing you know, goes there. But it stays, in all cases, of course, on the server. Uh, I think most of the other features at the moment rely on various statistics, which, well, are in the database anyway. Um, so, yeah, there's, there's little to turn off there. I have another live stream question. So, um, the AI features like face recognition, they do not send any photos to big tech servers. How is that possible? And will that really work even on a NAS server? <laughs> yeah, this was my point earlier. Yes, it works. It really works. <laughs> No, that's like a total total myth that only big tech can do machine learning. It's not true. It can uh, happen on your Raspberry Pi. All right, Kate. Uh, how does the local uh, editing know on which client it needs to open the file? Because there could be various scenarios where you don't really, uh, you are not able to distinguish on the connection between a desktop client and the browser if it's on the same machine or a different machine on the same network or could even be virtualization where you have multiple VMs and it doesn't know on which uh, uh, VM it opened, the, uh, it should open. Uh, it's actually kind of um, as the way it works, like you're in the browser and in that browser you say edit locally, then it will well stop whatever editing is happening, lock the file and simply call the, um, the browser integration of like run a local application and it calls the next client running on that system and then that will open the file. Uh, so okay, yeah, I, I think I understand. No, how. Thanks. Yeah, exactly. There's no, yeah, there's no conf confusion there. Uh, Next. Al allow me another small question from the live stream. Uh, I think this is for Jan and Misha. So, uh, is this design available? Is the design already available? Um, yeah, it is most certainly available, like um, most of the things that we showed are already up and running. So um, if you have the latest version, you will be able to see the design on pretty much all of your apps, I think. Um, they do use the view component, so, um, and I mean, on files it's still available, but you definitely can see it in the latest version. We're running it on our instance. 
although that's still RC, right? Um, but it's, well, pretty decent, so I would say give it a try, run it on your test system maybe, and give us feedback so we can make sure that the final final in a couple of weeks is perfect. Uh, and if you're a developer who is here or online as well, uh, please yeah, talk to us uh, if, if you run into any issues or if, if you need help uh, updating to the new design. Yeah, we're all here, uh, front-enders, us designers. Yeah, let's, let's make it look nice and, uh, and proper. All right. Um, a question from Livestream. What's the importance of the Office Advisory Board for Nextcloud? What do you intend to achieve with that board? Yeah, maybe, um, <laughs> and maybe it's obvious for everybody else, but for me it's not always obvious which one, what we should focus on. Um, so office is crazy complicated, as some of you might know. If you just go through the menu, it has like a million features, like um, all offices, LibreOffice, Microsoft Office, everything. And uh, just the real question is what, is what is important for everybody. Um, and this is just where we want to have like feedback from uh, real users. And as I said earlier, the focus here is a little bit that the most challenging users for this kind of online office, from at least my point of view, are really this like public administrations who are really lagging behind with digitalization. That's something that's very common in Germany and maybe in other countries too, where the people are really working with like super, whatever, 20-year-old, outdated word macros. This is really crazy. Oh, and um, for most consumers, this is a non-issue because everybody's using some kind of word, uh, online editor, or whatever, something, just a markdown, I don't know, something simple. But there are little organizations like this, like public administrations, we really have like crazy use cases. You, you wouldn't believe if you just like go to your, uh, to your authorities and you register your dog or something. I, I'm sure the process involves some kind of PDF creation, rescanning it, uh, calling visual basic scripts, whatever weird stuff, right? That is really, that's the reality. And this is why we picked this group as um, organizations who tell us what they need. What do you really need? To, yeah, to have to really replace Microsoft Office as good as possible. And there we get this, all this feedback. This is where this feedback coming from that we really want to have the, the real fonts, not open source replacement fonts, but the real fonts, that we really need to be able to run the, the macros, this embedded OLA databases, whatever stuff. Um, and this is where we get the input from. And yeah, maybe it's not obvious for everybody, but for us it's just very helpful to just get the feedback what we should do. Okay, uh, I have a question about the Windows client. As an administrator, I have a problem with uh, users changing passwords uh, on the Active Directory, and then the client sees that the password is not right, and then ask the user to reauthorize again. Why doesn't client you try the logged in username and password when it authorizes to the server? So I, I know such a similar uh, problem on LDAP um, when they are search, um, changing the a password on the external LDAP server, then um, each of every app token which is stored on the Nextcloud server, which is used for by the clients, needs to be re-encrypted with a new password. Mm -hmm. And this can only be done on the server side. So after changing a password um, on the Active Directory, I think it's enough to log in once via the online system. And then the app token is updated and then the clients will work without any problems. So I think that must be, should be the problem and the solution. Uh, I think that uh, at, at the moment uh, when the password is changed, there is client starts the browser for the client to re, uh, to enter the password again. Yeah, the, the, then it should um, work. But yeah, maybe it is a specific scenario with this Active Directory, and we can look into it later. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and just one more question: How, uh, When I uh, change the installations. Is there an easy way to port the user data? I mean, I have 200 users. How should I change, how should I move their data to the new server? 
So it depends a bit what you want to achieve by that. I mean, the thing is that in Nextcloud, what you basically want to migrate is the data directory, the database, and the config file that's in the config directory. These three pieces are basically the things that contain the changeable data and maybe the apps um, that you want to use. And if you just copy this over, then you have migrated your instance. I mean, I don't know if this answers the question. It depends a bit what you want to achieve, actually, to be honest. But these are the three uh, things you need to back up and also move if you want to move to a different machine, for example. But we can talk about it later in detail if you want. All right. Team, I have one last question. Uh, I saved it for last because it's kind of a broad question. It came from the live stream. I'm going to mention the name because perhaps you can reach out again. It's from Amon Reich. He asked, personal health data is one of the most sensitive data and doctors, specialists, nurses need to share data like results, receipts, accuracy, etc. It would be nice if someone has experience and like to share. It's a bit of a broad question, but if somebody is able to say something about that. <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, we actually have something for it, uh, or actually two apps for it. Uh, uh, one is called uh, Health, simply, and one is called EHR, Electronic Health Records. Um, I don't know if actually any of the developers of these apps are here, um, but they're they're on our App Store, they're on GitHub, um, and yeah, um, if you if you want to try them out, uh, give them a, a try. I uh, once uploaded like an X-ray I had of a, a broken bone. Uh, worked well. I could view my broken bone. So. Uh, <laughs> That kind of stuff you can do in Nextcloud also, yeah. Excellent. And we invite Amon to come, of course. And I want to add for that, so if you're wondering why, uh, why, they're ho well, why hospitals aren't using Nextcloud, so some are, uh, actually, uh, we will soon publish a case study of that. And on Tuesday at the Enterprise Day, there's actually a customer of us, a hospital from the Netherlands, uh, who will you know, present a case study, essentially, of how they use Nextcloud to keep the... Yeah, private data of their stu um, patients safe. So. Excellent. So, anybody some last minute questions? Yes, that's always the case. <laughs> a ch change of usernames. Uh, I have a f few times a year that people marry, they change their name and, and I d don't have a solution because it's also their login name. So how should I proceed? Should I create a new user, transfer the data, or what is, what is the <laughs> recommended practice? Uh, yeah, maybe we move really in the technical discussion here a bit, but I can answer that, because it's also a common, uh, <laughs> common question. So people have to stop marrying that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is this famous saying. It's a very famous misconception in computer science that name, names never change, which is like... <laughs> Wrong, <laughs> obviously, <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah. No, there is. It's it's actually interesting. So um, the username cannot be changed because it is used in as a reference all over the place in the file system, in log files, in the in the database, everywhere. But what you can do is you can hide it from the user because there's a display name, right, which can be changed to the new name, and there are different ways to authenticate where you don't need a username like with SAML or login via email, for example. You can also log in via email, which is working. Right? You can just tell the user, forget your username, log in via your new email that you can use, or use some other authentication method where there is no username. And it's, then, it's not visible anywhere, it's completely hidden. You can just treat it as an internal ID, and the user will... Okay, now it gets complicated. <laughs> Let's talk about it offline. But the strategy is not to change it, but to hide it from the user. That's the strategy. Yeah, sure. You can yeah. It's not a question, but I just wanted to say the improvements to accessibility and design in 25 in the release clients. I just wanted to say that it's, I think it's a really laudable goal. And um, in testing it, I, I can't imagine how much time and effort it's taken across yeah, the so, many, really close. Yeah. so many of the apps. So, um, as someone who's tested it, I just want to say thank you, and I think it's a massive step forward that will only get better with time, and it's, it's really great. So thanks. Yeah, that's really nice to hear, I mean. 